See, Cam the Cam was the first one. I, I've had like 16 hits, but it was that was started in 1973. Right. And I think my first hit in America was because I had minor hits here. Right. All Shook Up got in the charts. Double Gay Drive got in the charts. Never Been in Love got in the charts. Can't Give Me Love Lower End. Well, that's my favorite. Yeah. That's my, that's, that's my that's favorite. That's my favorite. If, if, you can't, my, if you can't give me a lot. I mean, and, and of course, on YouTube, it has, on YouTube, there's a lot of stuff you sure on YouTube. Lot, yeah. And your signature was when you were like doing like this, kind of like a yeah. cute little thing, you were going like that, and yeah. you were singing, you're playing the guitar, and, and the, one, the one deal, how you were going back and forth, yeah. you know, side, like, you know, yeah. it's kind of like a little signature move. You kinda, yeah. It kind of just stood out. I don't know. I, don't, I can't look at it that way. I, I crack up when I see myself live. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, no. Because it just moves you. The music takes you somewhere. You don't take it. It takes you. It takes you. Yeah. And, and you just move how you move. But uh, Stumbling In was the million seller here for me, and well, it's actually one of the favorites around the world, that yeah. song. The ballad, isn't that funny? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm known for rock and roll, and it was the ballad that really captured people. Same as If You Can't Give Me Love. Why do you think, Lo, that these other songs, which I think they would have been big hits, I mean, wh why do you think these hit, they were not major hits in, in the United States? The focus was never put on here. Um, I was based in England with an English record company, right. and um, I think Mickey Most, he's deceased now. He's like a dad to me. Mm -hmm. um, he felt safer having me successful in everywhere that he had control over, and he didn't have control in America, so right. consequently he didn't, he didn't um, put us with, I don't think, the right record companies over here. And he kept changing okay. record companies, so we never had continuity over here. Right. But saying that, we did, oh, maybe eight or nine very successful tours. We sold a lot of albums, everybody certainly knows who I am, but we didn't have that single success in the States. And it happened how it's supposed to happen. I guess I believe everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, and then, of course, Happy Days changed all that. I mean, yeah. people know me here for Happy Days, and everywhere else in the world, for my music, somebody who had millions of hits but also did a TV show. And over here, they know me for that. Right. It's so I strange. Yeah, it's crazy. And they know you for the one hit. The, the one, one hit, hit, yeah. The one hit. Chris, Chris Norman, right? Mm -hmm. Do you still talk to Chris? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I still Chris see him. Norman. In fact, I'm going to be singing with him at the end of March. There you go. Yeah. Um, that being said, now, of course, with everything you've done in the UK, you've had your tours. Now, you have yearly tours throughout, or do you? I go everywhere. Go everywhere. I go, um, I do average 60 shows a year still. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, September, completed my 24th sold out tour mm -hmm. of Australia. Right. Uh, I do a lot in Europe. I do a lot in the UK. Um, and then I'm going back again now, public demand. I'm going Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong mm. in April. Right. I go straight from a German show back to Heathrow and then away again. And, of course, I've got my long-running radio show. But what's the, big, the biggest thing for me in the past couple of years has been the release of Back to the Drive, which right. was an autobiographical album. It took me 15 years to make that album. Right. And also my autobiography, Unzipped. Unzipped. So which these are the two, two yeah. big things that I did that really kind of brought everything full circle. Right. For me. Right. Because, like I said, with anything else, but I mean, the music, and this, 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 I mean, this music could have been great in the U.S., no doubt about it. You, know, you just would have, you know. But that being said, with anything, you've, um, you have a unique style to yourself. Now, mm -hmm. of course, very unique in lots of ways. Um, they, it's the, who would you compare yourself with other than in your, in your time? Who would you compare yourself with? I mean, like Pat Bentar. Yeah, we say Janis Joplin, but maybe... Uh, yeah, Pat was my fan. Pat was your fan? Yeah, she came to see me before she had success at the, uh, I believe it was the Roxy. Right. Yeah. Pat Burns, sir? She wanted to learn some moves, she said. What about Joan Jett? She was my biggest fan. She was your biggest fan, so they, so they looked up to you. Oh, God, they were yeah. way after me. Yeah. Uh, Joan was in every, at every gig in L.A., she would be in the lobby of the hotel. Right. Waiting for me. You know, which was so cute. You know, right. it was cute. And um, because I, I, I and she's very good at what she does. Yeah. And she actually was in Japan backstage watching me at every show at the side of the stage. Right. So she was, and she would tell you this, she was a big, big fan. And I was relieved when she started The Runaways. Relieved because I thought she needed an outlet for her worship. You know, she was like, oh. right. and I thought, well, God, you know, don't just be a fan, do something. And she did. Right. And indeed, she made a huge career out of it. So I'm, I'm proud in a way. I was, I was proud of that, I guess. You right. know, Good for her. Well, I want to backtrack here a little bit now. 
you, on, the, on the internet, you were talking about the reasons why that you didn't, that Elvis Presley had contacted you, and you felt like it wasn't the time. Or, I, I'm, I'm curious to know more about that. Um, let me see, that was 1974. All Shook Up had been in the charts. Right. And we were in Memphis, and he called me. There you go. And he said, um, I nearly died. <laughs> and he said, uh, I think your version of All Shook Up is the best since my own, and would you like to come to Graceland? And I actually said something like, I'm a bit busy, but there is a reason. I mean, you know, you've got somebody who gave me, gave me the reason to do what I do. Right. And I'd only had like a year of hits, and I didn't feel ready to meet my idol yet. Wasn't ready yet. If he'd asked me like a couple years later, it would have been fine, but wasn't ready. I wanted to be more on an equal footing. So I wasn't like, you know, worshipping at his feet, although I would have been anyway. But I just wanted to have a few more hits under my you belt. You wanted it to be more yeah. out there. And yeah, if you yeah, knew, yeah. knew hindsight being 2020, if you had to do it all over again, you would have probably said, yeah. No, because, no. again, I believe in fate. And um, I wouldn't have written Singing with Angels, which will be out soon. That's my that tribute for Elvis yeah. Presley. And it was recorded about two years ago with James Burton and the Jordanaires yes. in Memphis, in Nashville, I mean. And um, if I'd met him, I wouldn't have written that song. And that song is my little gold. It's, it's, it is a hit, not yet, but it will be. And I don't think I would have had the, um, the feeling to write that song if I'd actually met him, because it, it made me put him up there. Right. You know? Let's jump into that right now. Um, now, Joan Ayers were, the one song that, that I know, Crying in the Chapel, was one song they did with Elvis, I believe. They did all of the early stuff. All the yeah. early stuff with Elvis. Um, but now, this is a song that you've created, that, that's going to be out. It will be out. It will be out. Probably next year sometime. We have to make it. I couldn't release it on uh, Back to the Drive. It's such a special piece of music that it doesn't belong anywhere. Right. And we've been searching for the home for it. What album should this be on? Right. You know? And now we have found the type of album to do to put this song on. So we're getting started on that shortly, which it will happen. But it's... It gives you goosebumps. People cry when they hear it. I can, well, I heard it on yeah. that too. Yeah. You also did Desperado by the Eagles, and that, my favorite and, and, song. And that was, and you were driving your Mercedes, like a Mercedes yeah. in yeah. the desert or somewhere. Yeah. And well, that's the girl that's doing the documentary. That well, the documentary is now done naked under leather. Right. Vicky Blue, who was um, she's a marvelous director and a friend, she decided to film that that way. You know, when we were out filming for the documentary, she said, let's do Desperado. In effect, it was her idea to do Desperado. Favorite Eagles tune, my, 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 my favorite. Yeah. And she said, just make it plain. So we just did it with a piano. And the version that nobody's heard yet is I actually had Jeff Beck put down guitar on it, which he's done. Yeah. He's put down now, guitar. Did Jeff Beck uh, play with e ELO? Or was it the same different one I'm looking at? I, mean, I thought no, he was with, he's, no, he's Jeff just was, okay. a star on guitar all on his own. He's right. the best. Gotcha. And he actually put down a guitar on this track for me. So that's the version that will come out. Right. Maybe what, that'll be on the same album as uh, Singing with Angels. There you go. What is your relationship with Alice Cooper? We know that uh, you are buddies and all that. Forever, since <laughs> the, yeah, Detroit days. Um, we used to rehearse at their garage. Right. Uh, which is good friends, really, really good friends. I think there was one moment in time when we could have been boyfriend and girlfriend, but uh, Alice, we always crack up at that because we had one serious smooch, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we both just went, Nah. It wasn't nah. It was just friends, No, mostly. we did this big soul-searching kiss, yeah. and then we just kind of pulled back, and we went... And we've been like brother and sister. Right. But we had the moment, you know, right. where it could have gone either way. Love him to death. Nice, nice man. Um, got a lot of time for him. 